Welcome back to the Beauty Doctors by Kakuna. I am very excited today because I have a very very special guest who has come all the way from Los Angeles. If you have watched The Doctors, the award winning, the Emmy nominated show, you would know who I am talking about. The handsome <laughs> co-host, the dynamic Dr. Andrew Auden. Dr. Andrew Auden has been a plastic surgeon since last three decades and he is at the top of his game. It will be a great opportunity for me to talk to him and talk to our people to know what he is doing and what's so special that he wants to bring to Dubai. You know, when I came to Dubai, my dream was to bring, to make Dubai the LA of Middle East. And today, I'm sitting with Dr. Andrew and I think my dream seems to be fulfilling. <laughs> so, I welcome Dr. Auden. Dr. Sanjay, it's a Thank pleasure. You. And that introduction, you read it just like I wrote it, right? Thank you. No, no, you know, you're too kind. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here, to join you here at Kakuna Clinic. Uh, th this is new for me, but uh, so far I can see that uh, you and I are going to have a great relationship Absolutely. here at uh, Kakuna Clinic. Everybody is really top flight, the A team you have here. It's been a delight so far and we're just getting started. And congratulations on your, your own TV show, season three. I know with, with COVID, uh, it's affected all of us. I, I was doing the doctor's TV in LA from home for a lot of the time. So I had my suit on here and I had my pajamas <laughs> or my scrubs on down below and my slippers. Those days are over, but uh, you know it was a different, a different uh, period in time for all of us. But I, I think things are getting better, and I think things in Dubai, plastic surgery are only going to get better. Definitely, we are very excited that Dr. Andrew Auden will be with us on a regular basis here at Kakuna. So I would really welcome Dr. Andrew Auden to this beautiful country to this beautiful city of Dubai, to beautiful Kakuna, and on the beauty show. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Now, you know, when, when the people here knew that I'm going to talk to you, I have a lot of questions for you. They are all excited, uh -oh. and I have to ask these questions on their behalf. My first question is, what is your sec secret behind looking so sharp, healthy, and at the top of your game? Well, thank you. I mean, I tried to dress up for you to, to, for respect for you, Dr. Sanjay. You know, I practice what I preach. And, uh, you know, I've been on the doctors 13 seasons now, one of the hosts. And, oh. yeah, I, I talk about plastic surgery. But most of it is health in general, well-being. And we know that if you take care of yourself in general, whether we're talking about your heart, your lungs, whatever, it affects how you look as well. So I try to live my life the way I talk about uh, on TV. Those things that we know are good for good heart health, good sexual health are also going to reflect how you look. And I think, I think beauty starts on the inside. So we're talking about diet and exercise. I like the way you have your exercise stuff yeah. set up <laughs> outside. I haven't tried it yet, you but did? I will. Okay. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah that you know the combination, it's eating right, yeah. diet, trying to deal with stress properly, and I'm blessed with genes, good genes, so I think I'm aging well. I mean, I'm not gonna talk about my age. Age <laughs> is just a number, but uh, I have passed my 60th birthday. I am not afraid to say that. I am <laughs> upward of 60, but you know, I feel great. Age is just a number, and you know, I think staying busy, that having a Absolutely. passion, yeah. working, staying busy with something that you really believe in and love, I think that's another one of my, my if there is a secret, not really secrets, no. but uh, I feel good, I'm enjoying life, and uh, a lot more, the best is yet to come. Awesome. You know. I'm sure you've seen Dubai in the world map now. It is advancing very rapidly and we are so proud that the beauty industry is really uh, taking you know, leaps and bounds. 
But what we really want to know is what's happening in Beverly Hills. What's the new trends? What are people doing there? What are the celebrities doing there? You know, it's so interesting that you let into, you know, people talk about Dubai. I'm telling everybody in Beverly Hills, oh, I'm going to Dubai. I'm going to be in Dubai. They're like, wow, <laughs> that that you are right. That the word is out that Dubai, UAE, Middle East, I mean, it's a lot is happening here. A lot is trending in the beauty business in general. And, you know, trends, they sort of go in a circle, whether they start in Europe or North America, Asia, the influence. I mean, you know, they love their cosmetics and their, their beauty in Japan as yeah. well as China, Malaysia and the Middle East as well. And I, I think it's a full circle. Okay. So certain things influence influencing starts in one part and then spills over to the other. So I see what you're doing here, what's yeah. going on in Dubai. And to be quite honest, the same the same hot topics, the same requested procedures are being done here as well as there. But but to get back to Beverly Hills, I think, you know, what is growing the most are minimally invasive, yes. non-invasive things that there's something for everybody. People are starting at a younger age, whether it be fillers, skin care, I mean, clear and brilliant, PRP, the, the list goes on, uh, microdermabrasions, all of these things that there's something for everybody starting at a young age and then progressing. And I think you and I both agree that the earlier you start, you're going to put off uh, the bigger things that we do. I'm not saying you'll never need them, but if you're good about starting off small steps, you may delay that, that facelift or whatever for a while. It's very true. I'll tell you one very interesting incident, you know, and, um, and, and, and that tells what Dubai is uh, going to. I had one patient, a very a favorite patient of mine with me for a long time. She called me once and she said, Doctor, you know, I've learned one technique. I want you to do cat's eye procedure for me. <laughs> I said, cat's eye procedure? I, I don't know about it. I said, Doctor, let me come to you. I'll show you how it's done. So she actually came down and she drew me on a paper and was trying to tell me what to do. Is, isn't but, it unbelievable <laughs> what patients know? I mean, the internet, as we know, yeah. is powerful. Sometimes. Yeah. Too powerful, too powerful when patients come in and tell you what what they want. And I've had the demand for this cat eye procedure not only uh, in the states back in Beverly Hills, but here. And I, I think it's trending when they when they say I want a cat eye look. It's that they want that lift in the mid face, the the cheek area, the temple and the tail of the brow. They want all of that to come up, which in effect is also just going to give a little bit, a little bit of an upward turn here in the, uh, in the canthus or corner of the eye area. So there you go. It's, awesome. it's the cat eye procedure. It's caught, it's caught on. I know a lot of people are, are doing something similar with threads. You and I are surgeons. We prefer to, to do surgeries that last longer. And I'm not saying that all threads are bad, but, but you and I, we, we prefer because our training and experience, yes, we may suggest something more invasive, but it's going to last longer. And, you're gonna, and you, you typically are going to get a more dramatic result. So with this, this uh, cat eye procedure, we're doing a modified cheek temple lift. We're, we're using endoscopic techniques in the brow and then we're going subperiosteal over the, the cheekbone using our craniofacial principles that we learned. Yeah. You know, so many people don't get how much training plastic surgeons like, like uh, Dr. Sanjay and I have had. So the point that I was making, Dr. Sanjay, is that you and I highly trained plastic surgeons, reconstructive surgeons, and getting back to the, the, the cat eye lift that we apply principles that we use in reconstruction, uh, subperiosteal elevation and craniofacial surgery, all those things. People don't realize that uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot 
to what we do and we apply those principles into our the procedures we do and that's why we we come up with more sophisticated procedures I have an interesting patient who asked me can you open my eyelids and make it bigger would you do such a procedure what do you think about it no we get some pretty crazy yeah. requests you know I I should write memoirs at some point but somebody <clears throat> wanted a Heidelberg fencing scar yeah. to look like he <clears throat> was injured in a, uh, excuse me, <coughs> in a sword fight. We've had some strange requests, yes, but when somebody, and that, that gets back to such an important point. As good plastic surgeons, we have to know when to say yes and when to say no. It's all about patient selection. So, Dr. Andrew Auden, you are one of the top 20 plastic surgeons in the world. How does it make you feel to be at the top of the game? And how are you able to meet the expectations of all the patients all these years? Well, I, I thank you for, for giving me that, that credit. And, you know, being on TV 13 seasons worldwide, over 144 countries as the plastic surgeon on the doctors has given me a certain degree of notor notoriety. I appreciate you considering me one of the best. I, I would say I'm one of the best known because of of my exposure on TV. But you know, and I and I take that that title uh, humbly. You know, I continue to learn. I learn. I watched you operate, I learned from you, I learned from my other colleagues. I think that's an important part of it to keep you humble and to keep you on top of your game. If you think, if you think that, that you can succeed, that I can do procedures the way I did them in my training 30 something years ago, that's not gonna work. Of course, back then we didn't have endoscopic and Brazilian butt lifts and high def, they, we didn't have any of that. So. You have to keep learning. You have to keep up with with what's um, the latest and greatest. But to your point, how do you meet patients' expectations? Well, I have to admit, none of us, none of us, a hundred percent. You just can't because what we do is an inexact science. We can't we can't always control healing how people are going to respond. There's always going to be complications with surgery. Hopefully you can keep them to something small that you can treat and, and the patient does fine. So it's tough and it, it people, they, they know me from TV and they, they say, well, nothing can go wrong. Well, that's where it comes down to me being good about explaining going into it that yes, there are always are potential uh, complications. But Dr. Sanjay, as you know, we learned the hard way, you and I have been doing this for decades, that it's patient selection. You have to make sure that patient is doing elective surgery for the right reason, wants natural results, realistic expectations. You know, if you cover those bases as a starter, I think your chances are better at meeting expectations, but you're not always gonna meet expectations, so what do you do? Well, I've learned you sort of have to take a deep breath, maybe go to neutral corners, let a, let a patient relax, take a deep breath, try to, to be reasonable with them, maybe take photographs, tell them I have to study these, compare, you know, so allow sort of a, a cooling off period because as we know, patients very often after surgery, they go through a difficult time emotionally, especially if they have people around them. Why'd you do this? Oh, you're bruised and swollen. You look like a monster. They get that all the time. That doesn't make our job any easier. So. That being said, patient selection, and I've learned sort of to, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it, it, using meditation or uh, just doing mental time, timeouts to try to help patients get through it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that certainly helps. Yeah. Now, I, I, 
you all want to know who are the celebrities that you have tweeted and if you're happy with well i can i can't say specific names i mean i can say joan rivers she's passed away now she was a dear friend and she loved her plastic surgery she was she was she was great but you know i can say that my my patients are out there uh famous singers uh actors actresses uh both on television and the movies sports figures so they're out there you you've seen them i can't i can't specifically uh mention names understand that yeah so how many times have you got requests from the patients saying i want to look like angelina jolie and what well back in the day angelina jolie was numero uno for for the nose for the lips for the breast but now you know things change so now it's a little bit more bella hadid maybe it's uh, kylie jenner we get a lot of the kylie jenner it's a lot of the Kirk kardashians for that tiny waist and the full hips and the the full backside so it changes and <clears throat> i think i'm a little older than you so so earlier on it was claudia uh schiffer her nose and uh cindy crawford's nose was was requested a lot but uh, angelina jolie was sort of the go-to person that people wanted i think she was one of the first really with those big full lips and i mean and as you know you look at her picture she had her lips done she had her nose done she had her breast done i mean you can just tell our eyes don't miss a thing but it continually changes and now it's somebody else i get a lot of requests for bella hadid's nose which is a nice nose Did you do her nose? <laughs> We can't say. We can't say. Can't say. So, tell us what what kind of procedure have you done for yourself? On myself? Yeah. Nothing big. I mean, I I could use I could I could use the cat eye procedure, but no. Uh I've been pretty good about the maintenance i mean i started on the botox when it first came out so so we're talking uh back in the 80s uh, when it, and fillers and i've had some volume put in my face i've had a couple laser resurfacing i've done non invasive skin tightening we like thermage so you know the the whole concept the ultra the whole concept of heat frequency energy with which heats the deeper layers uh below the skin the dermis formation collagen elastin all that good stuff so i'm due soon but uh but but nothing big yet and it's it's maintenance i probably get more sun than i should so it's it's starting to get some spots here but i also do that laser for brown spots laser resurfacing i've had but um fillers but nothing big yet but I'm not opposed to it. Lastly Dr. Angle, we all know what you do. Tell us what you have done in Dubai, you know, what surgeries and what's your favorite surgery? What you love to do? Well, th- this is one of the things that I that I really embrace coming to Dubai. I, I've been here a week now and the assortment of surgeries that I've already done. I mean, I I like doing facelifts and noses the best. I would say that's probably what I'm best known for, but already this trip I did a a gentleman who lost 60 kilos of weight, so 130 pounds. I think the worst case that I've ever seen of loose skin and, you know, so-called man boobs on this guy. The life delightful fellow. So you know i ended up doing really uh, mastectomies with free nipple grafts on him huge case big case do i is that something i do all the time no but i enjoy the post weight loss patient he is so thrilled you know for it's a life changer for this young man he can't couldn't wear a shirt obviously would never go with without a shirt now we've done this for him he's got a flat chest Fortunately he's got a hairy chest so when the hair comes back he's going to be fine. Uh yesterday big big tummy tuck with high def 
laser. Uh, today I did lower eyelids with fractional CO2 laser resurfacing. I did one of my cat eye procedures at the beginning of the week, so the cheek temple brow lift. So it's a real, a real potpourri, and I think that's, I, I think that's what makes us great surgeons that we can we can jump from one procedure to another procedure, do it well, and love doing it. Do I want to do those big body lifts every day? No, but occasionally they're they're a challenge. They're fun and. You know, it's so rewarding to see patients move on with their life. Oh, well, it was exciting to talk to you. You know, Likewise. I new energy today talking to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Andrew Orton. I welcome you again. Thank, thank you. We look forward to having you more and more here at Kikuna. Well, Well, thank you for inviting me into your, your wonderful clinic here. We're just getting started. The best is yet to come, and uh, I'm ready for more TV anytime you want. Thank you.